Welcome to part four of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating this industrial building scene. If you haven't seen the previous parts, then you can check out the tutorial playlist linked in the description. So in this part, we're going to be making the sidewalk and the dirt and the road. And we're also going to be doing a little bit more scene setup, like duplicating a building over here in the background. We'll also add a camera and then set up some lighting. And before we get started with this part, I wanted to let you know about a really great Blender add-on for realistic sky lighting. Physical Starlight and Atmosphere is an amazing Blender add-on for creating realistic skies and sky lighting. I've used the add-on myself and I highly recommend it. You can customize the sun, atmosphere, stars, clouds, fog, and more. The add-on also provides some outstanding sky presets, such as daytime and sunset, fog and haze, Mars, and even retro wave. You can also change the time of day just by rotating the sunlight. Check out the add-on with the link in the description, and by purchasing the add-on through my link, you'll be helping to support this channel. So we'll start by creating the sidewalk, so I'll go to the add menu, and we're going to add a cube. I'll zoom into the cube, and let's go to edit mode, and I'm going to squish it down, scale it, just like that. I'll go back to object mode and then I'll move it over here so we can see it better. Let's go to top view and I will stick it right here so it's kind of aligning up with those blender grids. Then I'll go into edit mode and I'm going to go to wireframe. Just deselect everything. We're just going to box select this part here and bring it out by one grid. So you can see one, two, three grids. And then box select this part here and bring this out so that it's three grids this way and up as well. And we might as well select everything and move it back in here so it's kind of in the center of where the origin is. Let's go back to object mode and then I want to move this over here and we'll stick it right here near the door and then I'll go into edit mode and I'm going to navigate here to this side we'll go to the face select and I'll select this face and I'll extrude this out and we'll extrude there into the building so they can walk on the sidewalk to the door and then back in object mode let's bring this down a little bit we'll bring it right down there so the sidewalk is just right down there on the bottom of the building so just like that and then back in edit mode, we will add a loop cut and we'll drag this loop cut right over there. Then we'll go to the face select. We're going to select this face here and we'll extrude this face out and just bring it there to the end of where that building is. Actually, I'm going to bring it a little bit farther so it goes to the end there of where that gray spot is. And then if I select everything, let's bring it back a little bit. So we'll bring it back on the Y axis right about there. And then we'll select this face here and we'll extrude this face out going over into that building. Then let's go to top view and we'll go to wireframe and we're gonna to go to the vertex select. I wanna box select this original part that we started with and just bring it right over here. So there's just a little bit of space in between the railing there and the porch and then that spot there. Let's go back to solid view. We'll go to the face select. I'm gonna select this face and we will extrude this face out pretty far. Let's go to top view again and I'll extrude it out to about the end of the stairs and then we'll extrude it out again over here. And for this one, I wanna bring it out to about the end of the building. Then we'll select this here and we'll extrude this back into the building. And then let's select this face here and we'll extrude it even farther so it's going out into the scene. Then on the other side we'll select this face here and we will extrude this out. Let's go to top view. We'll extrude this out even farther. Place that there and then extrude it out again and have it roughly about three wide so it's kind of the same width. And then we'll extrude this out again and it's going to go really far. Then we'll select this face here and we'll extrude this face way back there. And we'll go back to object mode. Let's save this and that'll be it for the sidewalk. So let's copy the same modifier. So I'm going to select the sidewalk and then lastly select the building. Control L and then we are going to copy the modifiers and then we will also shade this object smooth. And then let's add a material. So we'll go to the materials, click on new and we'll just call this sidewalk and I'll just make it a slight gray color just so it looks a bit nicer in the viewport. That's pretty good. Let's go to the add menu and we're now going to add the dirt. So I'll add a plane. We'll go into edit mode and I'm going to scale up this plane pretty big and kind of move it over here and then we'll scale it up even farther like that. And then let's go to the edge select. Just select this back edge and bring the edge farther. Select this edge here and bring that farther. And then over on this side, select that edge and bring it over to about there. Let's go back to object mode and I'll duplicate this object and we're going to put it over here on this part of the sidewalk. And this is going to be the street. So if I zoom into the street and the sidewalk, I want to bring the street down. So there's a little lip there where the sidewalk starts. So like that. And then we'll select this object. We'll add a new material. I'm going to call it road. And then this here, this is going to be a bit darker. So this is going to be the parking lot, like where the cars would park before going into the 
the building. Let's select this plane here. We'll add a new material. And this one we can call dirt or ground. And for this one, I'm going to make it kind of like orange. And then we'll make it a little bit darker. And that way it's going to be kind of a light brown. So now I want to select this building here. And I'm going to duplicate this building. And I'm going to move it over here to the other side. And then I will rotate it. I'll rotate it by 90 degrees. I'll hit negative so it's negative 90. Let's go to top view. And I'm going to move it right over here like that. All right, bring it back a little bit. And to finalize where this is going to be, we should add a camera. So we'll do that now. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to add a camera. Let's move our view to wherever we want the camera to be. I want the camera to be kind of about there. And then I'll press control alt numpad zero. So control alt numpad zero is going to bring the camera to where we are. So I can bring the camera around and I'll bring it in and out just kind of fit the camera. And then also right here on the focal length of the camera, I find that turning down the focal length works better for this scene, for this building scene. So I'm gonna turn the focal length to 27. So this way it's kind of a little bit of a fisheye effect and the camera can see a lot more stuff around it, but I think it looks a lot better for this building scene. I find that when I zoom in a little bit or when I zoom in a lot and use a large focal length, it doesn't really look like a building. It doesn't look really large. It almost looks like a really small scene that you're kind of looking at. So I find turning it just to a 27 looks much better. It just makes the scene look a lot larger and you can actually see a lot more of the buildings as well. So I'm just now going to move this around and just place the camera to a good location. But basically I want to be able to see the bottom here, the bottom of the railing, and a little bit of the sidewalk and a little bit of the street, and then kind of this building here. And then I don't want to be able to see the end of the sidewalk, so I'm making sure that it's just showing the sidewalk going off. And then I also don't want to show this back here, but I do want to kind of show this wall. And I want to show a bit of the top of the building like that. I might even move everything out just a little bit and move everything a little bit over. So now on this building here, the far back building, I also want to have this piece right here, this dark piece. So I'll select this dark piece and I'll duplicate it and move it over here. Let's go to top view. I'll rotate it by 90 degrees, bring it forward. And then if I go into edit mode, I want to squish it way down, just make it a lot smaller. Go back to object mode and just kind of make the correct shape. So just kind of fit it there to the top of the building, something like that. And then I want to bring it up on the Z axis, make it a bit taller. So it's just kind of covering that spot. So that's looking much better. So now let's set up some lighting. So I'm going to be adding an HDRI light. And I mentioned the HDRI that I'm going to be using in part one of the tutorial series. I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using. Let's also click here on the render properties. And I'm going to be using the cycles rendering engine because I'm going for realism. But you could also use Eevee if you want to. But I'll be using cycles. Let's now click here on the world properties and here on the yellow dot next to color. I'm going to click on environment texture and then let's click on open. And here's the HDRI that I'll be using. It's the abandoned hopper terminal 04 HDRI from polyhaven.com. And I downloaded the 8K version and the HDR version. So we'll just click on open image and then I'll hold down the Z button, go into the rendered viewport mode. I'm also going to press control B and just add a boundary around the camera. And I like that there's a big tree right here. It's kind of a perfect HDRI for this scene because it looks like there's just a large tree kind of in the background in the city. So that works great for this scene. Now I do also want to add a sunlight to add a bit more direct light. So I'll go to the add menu and we are just going to add a sunlight. Let's go back to solid view for now and I'll move the sunlight up here and I'm going to rotate the sunlight over. You can also double tap the R key to use the trackball and I'm just going to kind of rotate that like there. Let's go back into the rendered viewport mode and I'm going to go to the object data properties to go to the light set. And for the light color, I'm going to make it very, very slightly yellow. And if you want to use the same exact hex value that I'm using, you can punch in FF E E E1. That's the color that I'll be using for the light. And then I'll turn this strength up to 10 so it's much brighter. Now this does look really bright and it kind of looks like the scene is being blown out. But once we add all the materials, it'll be much darker. It just looks really blown out right now because we have all the white materials. So let's just rotate this around and kind of stick it how I want. Something like that's pretty good. Now another thing that I want to do is change the color management. So let's click here on the render properties. I'm going to go down here to the color management tab and I'm going to use the view transform of AGX and on the look here I'll change this to high contrast and that'll make the colors look a lot nicer. Now this part of the tutorial series was much faster than I expected so just to kind of spread it out and make each part kind of an even length I'm going to start doing some of the UV unwrapping and the texturing of the buildings in this part. So I'm going to select the building let's go back to solid view and I first just want to start by UV unwrapping this so I'll go into edit mode and I'll start by just selecting everything and I'll hit U and we're just going to do the unwrap smart UV project and click on OK. 
and I'll go back to object mode. Let's click over here to go to the shading workspace and I'll go into the rendered viewport mode. And I'm now going to be adding in the brick texture. So let's click here on the material properties and make sure you select the red bricks in the material slots. So I'm going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on to use the principal texture setup. So make sure you enable the Node Wrangler if you don't have it enabled. And then I'm going to select the principal shader and we'll press Control Shift T. Then I'll locate to the folder with all the textures. Again, links are in the description to all the free textures if you want to download them. I'm going to go to the brick texture. So once you download the texture, you'll have to extract the zip file that comes when you download it. So extract the zip file and then go into the extracted folder. And I just want to select the normal GL and control select the roughness and the color. So just those three maps, those are the ones you'll need. And I'll click on principal texture setup. And Blender's automatically going to set up the texture maps for us. Now, of course, the UV are quite messed up so we want to change that so we'll select the object and we'll go here to the UV editing workspace let's go into the camera view and I'll go back into the rendered viewport mode or we could actually go into the material preview just to see that a bit more easy now there is a problem here and that is that these bricks are aligning up so I'm going to deselect everything and I'll go here to the side and then I'll just box select this side of the bricks and actually we need to go into the face select and then just box select this side of the building and we'll go back to the camera view so now you can see because just this part was selected, just this part was selected in the UV islands. So we're going to rotate this by 90 degrees, just like that. Now there's a problem with the UVs. If I go back to object mode, you can see the bricks are aligning up and there's not the same colored brick moving over to the other side. So we'll go into edit mode. And what we're going to do is just click and drag with the box select. And we're just going to box select these faces here. And you can see those faces right here in the UV islands are that there. And you can only see that because these are selected. Let's now go here to the side, and I'm also going to box select all these faces here. Now because we've selected those faces, you can see they're showing up right here. So now we just need to match both of these up so that it's seamless and the bricks are going along the building. So I'll hit G to grab, and I'm going to move this over here, and I'm going to bring it really close here to the end. And we'll stick it right there. So now if I look closely, you can see it's still off a bit. And this is actually because we need to rotate it by 180 degrees. So I'll rotate this, we'll type in 180 and then hit enter. And possibly for your scene, you might need to move it over to the other side. But for me, I needed to rotate it by 180 degrees. So now if I go back to object mode, you can see that it is correct. It's in the correct spot. However, you can see that some of the bricks are the wrong colors. And that's because we still have something messed up. So if I go back into edit mode, what I need to do is scale this and I just scale it on the X axis. And then I'll type in negative one and enter. So this is basically going to flip it. So it's going in the opposite direction. So we're basically flipping it and inverting it. Now if I go back to object mode, you can see the same colored bricks are lining up. Now there's still a few weird things like here, the brick is kind of ending really quickly. So if I go back into edit mode, let's first zoom in here really close and I'm going to bring it in so it's exactly aligning with the UVs. And then if I select all the UVs, if I press the A key to select all the entire UVs and then press the A key to select all the UVs in the editor, I can just move it along here and I can just fix anything that might be messed up. And now if I go back to object mode, you can see all the bricks have the same correct color. Now the bricks are obviously way too big. So if I go back into edit mode and select everything and select all the UVs, I want to scale these up much bigger. So something like that, bring this over here. So I'm just going to scale up to about that big. That looks pretty good. And if I zoom into the very bottom here, I want to move it back and forth. Let's move it along the Y axis here on the UV islands. And we're just going to make sure if I zoom in really close, we're just going to make sure that the brick ends there at the very bottom. So that looks correct. And if I go up here to the very top here, We'll just see. So you can see right there, there's like another brick which is kind of coming out. So let's actually scale up just a little bit bigger and then we can move it up just a little bit. And then if I go back down all the way down here to the bottom, that looks pretty good. Let's move it slightly down like that. So it's kind of just in the very center there. Now also if we zoom over here to this side of the building, you can see we're having a similar problem. So if I go back into edit mode, we're just going to go over to this side. And what I can do is actually go back to object mode. And then with this object selected, press shift H to hide everything else. If I go into edit mode now, I just want to zoom into this part here and we're just going to box like these here. So just select that side. And then right here, we need to rotate it by 90 degrees. So rotate the UV islands by 90. All right, that's good. And then if I zoom in here, you can see we're having the same issue. So 
Let's use the box select. We're going to box select this side here. We're basically just going to do the same thing. You can see there's the other ones. There's the other UV islands on the other side. So we're going to deselect everything. We're going to hit the L key just to select that island there. And then we're going to move the island. We're going to move it really close to the other one. So just stick it right there. Let's zoom in here and see if that's looking good. So it's not. So the first thing I'll try is rotating it by 180 degrees and you can see that has now totally fixed it. So sometimes you have to play around with it. You might need to invert it by scaling it the other way. You might need to move it over to the other side or rotate it, but now you can see that that's seamlessly moving there along the bricks. So if I press Alt H to unhide everything and then zoom in right over here to this part on the mirror, you can see that looks correct. Now I do just want to do a little bit of color correction to kind of change the brick color. So let's go here to the shading workspace and here in the shader editor, I will add the RGB curves and we'll put this between the base color and the principal shader. And the first thing that I want to do is just click and drag and drag a dot down here. So it just gets a little bit darker because I do want these bricks to be just a little bit darker. And then I also want them to be slightly more red. So if I click on the R for red, I'll just pull this out a little bit. So all the bricks look a little bit more red and that is a little bit better. All right, I'll go back here to the layout. Let's go into the rendered view, see how this is looking so far. So now we have some nice bricks and we're going to have to fix those bricks there, but we'll change that later. So let's press control S to save and this will wrap it up for this part of the tutorial series. So I hope you've been enjoying it so far and thank you for watching. And in the next part, we're pretty much going to be doing all of the other materials for all the other objects in the scene. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen and also the link will be in the description. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.